How's it going everybody and welcome back to Lead Therapy and thank you so very much for taking time for tuning in to my video. I was working on another video that I was going to post today and then I was sent some information that is some breaking news that I wanted to get out to you guys so I'll post the other video tomorrow. So we all know the ATF put out an open letter to all the FFLs stating that some of the FRT triggers that they considered machine guns but in that letter they didn't specify which triggers they considered machine guns. The breaking news is that yesterday morning a vendor for rare breed triggers was raided by the ATF with guns drawn and how we know this is the CEO of rare breed triggers Lawrence DeMonico posted a long video on Facebook yesterday talking about a lot of things including him saying that this vendor was raided by the ATF. The video was extremely long it was over 17 minutes long and most of it was about them suing the ATF but I condensed it down to about a six minute long video of him talking about the raid and some other things including people who are concerned that if the ATF raids rare breed or one of these vendors which happened yesterday morning will they turn over customer records so go ahead and watch the video and then I'll come back and finish up this video now to bring everyone up to speed on most recent events we have several vendors that help us with manufacturing one of those was vendors was sent a cease and desist letter by the ATF on January 12th of this year demanding they stop manufacturing and turn over all FRT-15s in their possession. The letter also stated that they would be notified why the products were illegal at a later time. Now here's a cease and desist letter and the ATF is demanding that you stop manufacturing and turn over all FRT-15s. But we'll tell you at some point later, I don't know when, but some point later why they're illegal. Now, of course, through their counsel, this vendor replied to the ATF explaining that the FRT-15 doesn't function as the ATF has alleged, and they would not be able to comply until such time that the ATF provided them with a detailed explanation as to how the FRT-15 FRT is illegal. Now, it's no surprise, we're in America. And in America, we are supposed to be free citizens and we have no obligation to follow an unlawful or unconstitutional order. Now, this vendor feels the same way and simply requested an explanation before they would comply. When the vendor's attorney sent the response, it was accompanied with high-speed slow-motion videos demonstrating exactly how the FRT-15 functions. Numerous expert opinion letters, rebuttal letters, and formally asked the ATF if those items had been considered. Now... Of course, the ATF didn't bother responding to them with an explanation of how the FRT-15 could be illegal, since it's not. Very plainly, it is not. In fact, they didn't respond at all. Now, instead, this morning, they rolled up to this vendor's business with guns drawn and raided their facility. At this time, I have no idea what was seized, but with that said, I do know that they keep very little of our products on hand, so I don't expect they got much. I also still don't know the full scope of what all they took, I suspect they didn't just stick to taking FRT-15s or their components, as it appears that the ATF's goal here is to really make an example of anybody that dares not bend the knee. My guess is that they probably hope if they can make an example of enough people, others won't stand up to them. Well, that's not me. While on the stand in our last hearing before the case in Florida was dismissed, our expert witness, Brian Lukey, testified that one of the most significant problems with the faulty Technical evaluation and report done by ATF examiner David Smith and approved by ATF tech branch chief Earl Griffith is that at some point law enforcement agencies and judges across the country would be using it as grounds to obtain warrants. So again, even though the ATF knows that their examiner report are absolute bullshit, they still went to a judge and used it to obtain a warrant in an attempt to destroy another, another American business. Now, of course, the first question many of you might have is, oh my goodness, does this vendor have any customer data? And the answer is no, they do not. But while we're on the topic, let's talk about customer data. Although I feel I've answered this question a hundred times, I'll address it again now. One of the most common questions that I get from our customers is if we would turn over our customer records. Well, we've answered this multiple times, but I'll say it again right now for the record. If the ATS asks us for our records, the answer is a very simple no, you can't have them. Now, if the ATF has a court order for our records, we would of course comply, but we cannot turn over what we don't have. While it's plainly written in our privacy policy on our website, I will go ahead and explain it here as well. 
We have a digital shredding policy. So once we no longer need a customer's personal info for legitimate business purposes, it's automatically scrubbed from our system. We don't take any steps to do it, it happens automatically. So with that said, we cannot turn over what we don't have. Okay, now if you have an order pending that hasn't shipped, we still intend on shipping your order, so please don't panic. Now if something changes and we're unable to fulfill your order, we will let you know and we'll issue you a refund. So don't freak out, don't panic, don't blow us up asking about it. You know, don't send a bazillion emails to customer service, we will get you taken care of. So the bottom line is that the ATF has become a rogue agency. They are operating outside the rule of law and they need to be reined in. And so here it is. Here's the call to action. We need you all to write your senators and congressmen and all the YouTubers that support the Second Amendment or just freedom in general, now's the time to make some noise. We can't allow a small group of unelected bureaucrats to make new laws. It's not legal, it's not constitutional, and we can't allow it. We need to stop them now, or they will continue down this path until we are no longer a free country. I mean, if they can change the definition of a machine gun to include a trigger that is a perfectly legal semi-automatic trigger, what is to prevent them from just changing the definition of machine gun to include any AR-15? They can just allege and claim that it is a bunch of parts that can be readily assembled to be a machine gun. Enough is enough. We've got to put it into this. Now, this is all I have for you now. I'll put out another video in a couple of days after I have some time to wrap my arms around the situation. Now, before I close, guys, I'd like to thank you all for your support. I mean, to be honest, even the assholes that constantly talk trash about rare breed triggers and me personally, I mean, really, you're just feeding the fire. Because we're not going to stand down. We're not going to bend the knee. We've done nothing wrong. The FRT-15 is 100% completely within the law. It is a perfectly legal semi-automatic trigger. All right, guys. I'll stop this video before it gets dark and there's nothing left to see. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. Expect more from me in a couple of days. And once again, guys, thank you all for your support. As you can see, Lawrence DeMonico doesn't back down from anyone, including the ATF. A lot of people do talk shit about their company. And a lot of people say that their FRT-15 triggers don't work very well. But that's not what this video is about. This is about the ATF and them unconstitutionally making up laws and raiding companies. As always, please leave your thoughts about the story in the comment section down below. If you like this video, or if I gave you some information you didn't know, please take time to like, share, and subscribe, and hit those post notifications. And I will see you guys in the next video.